Hello and welcome to Nutshell Recaps. This video explains the synopsis of the movie, Damsel. Warning, there will be spoilers, so proceed with caution. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, it will really help our channel grow. The king and his knights are riding across the hills of the country of Aria in pursuit of a dragon. They trail the beast into a cave, where they are shocked by what they discover. The dragon then uses her tail to apprehend and kill each of the surviving knights, one by one after flying in and killing the majority of them with a single breath of fire. When she finally gets to the monarch, he drops to his knees and bides his time till the conclusion. In a region far to the north, several centuries later, Florian and Elodie are chopping whatever wood they can find. They are the local lord's daughters, and they are doing everything they can to aid their people, who are suffering from the harsh winter and starvation. They might not have a town at all in the near future because more and more people are moving out of it every day. The sisters never get visitors, so it's unexpected when they see a carriage pass by. When they get home, they discover their stepmother Lady Bayford and Father Lord Bayford, chatting with a nun, who assures them Elodie will be okay before departing. Elodie is then informed by Lord Bayford that the Aria royal family want for her to wed their prince. Elodie initially says no, but after hearing Bayford's explanation that their community will have enough money to keep them alive for a very long time, she decides to alter her mind. The family sails to Aria at a later date. The group is frightened by some eerie forms in the darkness as they approach their destination. But it turns out that the creatures are two enormous statues of dragons. The ship enters a very thick mist. The family is astounded by the wealth of the area and the opulence of the castle upon their arrival. They are shown to their apartments by the servants, who also tell them that they will meet the royal family the following day. When Elodie visits the balcony to take in the view, she spots a girl her age being carried away by a maid on another balcony. Elodie can't sleep that night, so she occupies herself with painting. She then heads out to the balcony to get some fresh air and discovers the other girl's room is dark. Torches in the distance startle her as well, indicating that someone is ascending the mountain in the middle of the night. Elodie's family meets the royals the following day. Before the wedding, Elodie is sent by Queen Isabel to spend some time with Prince Henry. Following their initial awkward exchange, Elodie and Henry become friends and have a great talk. Elodie writes Henry a letter praising her artistic abilities, and then she inquires about the torches she saw the previous evening. The wedding is on the same day because, as Henry says, it's one of three historic rituals honoring their ancestors. As all is going on, Lord Bayford appears to be somewhat unhappy after concluding his conversation with Isabel in the castle. When Lady Bayford attempts to check on him, he gets angry and says there's nothing wrong. Isabel is not amused when Lady Bayford tries to talk to her later. Isabel responds that this is merely a transaction driven by necessity, she needs a princess, and Bayford's land needs money. When Lady Bayford explains that she believes the families should bond and get along, she also reminds Bayford that she should remember her status because she is a rope maker's daughter. When Lady Bayford corrects Isabel for mispronouncing Elodie's name, Isabel ignores her correction and walks away. Later that night, a frightened Lady Bayford approaches Elodie to inform her that she believes the wedding ought to be called off because of something fishy going on. However, Lord Bayford arrives and puts them all to bed before they get a chance to talk about anything further. The maids assist Elodie in getting ready for the nuptials the following morning. She receives a gorgeous outfit along with a scent diffuser and a dull dagger. Everything goes smoothly at the wedding. Elodie receives her own crown, Henry and she exchange rings and kiss. Elodie then bids her family farewell and boards a carriage with Henry who informs her they will be attending the historic ritual atop the mountain. Elodie is astonished to see a group of people wearing eerie golden masks as well as Isabel dressed like a nun when they ascend a rough flight of stairs. Elodie receives a coin from the queen, who promises to assist guard the realm. After that, they enter while Isabel tells a tale. Their forefathers found a dragon, the last of its kind, living on this island when they first arrived. As soon as the dragon noticed that the humans had settled down, it attacked the village. The king then rallied his troops and made an attempt to repel the beast. Except for the monarch, who had to give up his three daughters in order for the island to be divided, the dragon slaughtered everyone. Elodie observes while she hears the story that everyone is staring at her strangely and that they are traversing a perilous bridge over a precipice. Isabel continues, saying that before chopping off Henry and Elodie's hands, they commemorate the king's sacrifice every generation. Declaring that Elodie is now formally of royal blood, she presses them together to combine their blood and covers them with a cloth. Elodie then tosses the coin into the abyss, believing that this marks the conclusion of the rite. After picking her up to help her over the bridge, Henry abruptly apologizes and throws her into the chasm as well. Elodie smashes several trees while screaming as she falls, eventually landing on a puddle of mud and passing out. Moments later, she awakens with multiple bruises all over her body. Yet she still gets to her feet and begins calling out for assistance. Although no one is left on the bridge, the dragon concealed deep within the cave is awakened by her voice. Subsequently, Elodie sobs as her despair becomes into rage, ripping off the ornate jewelry before attempting to escape. Regretfully, she sustains more injuries after falling. She discovers at that point that other jewelry doesn't belong to her and that the royal family has been sacrificing females to the dragon for a long time. 
She enters the cave after hearing a disturbance and discovering a burning bird inside after turning around to look around. Elodie quickly extinguishes the fire with some earth, but it's too late. The bird has already passed away. Hundreds of burning birds emerge from the cave, circling Elodie for a short while before perishing nearby, all of which are accompanied by an abrupt roar. Elodie attempts to search for a way out with the little corpses acting as lights, but she freezes as she spots the approaching dragon. The dragon begins to speak, telling Elodie that she can smell it in her blood and that every generation of royalty must pay. Elodie flees behind a stalagmite to hide. Elodie understands the purpose of the ceremony is to deceive the dragon by glancing at her scar. Elodie cries as the dragon orders her to run, and she does so, making it down a tunnel as the dragon breathes fire behind her. Elodie finds a safe position barely in time, but the flames soon spread throughout the tunnel. She recognizes the burned corpse as being that of the girl she had seen on the balcony. Elodie tries to flee via a little hole as she hears the dragon pursuing her once more, but her dress becomes stuck in it. With much effort, Elodie succeeds in taking off her crinoline as the flames approach and flees, sheltering in a smaller cave. She screams in agony as some flames, regrettably, still manages to burn her leg. Because of the space between her enormous size and the dragon, the dragon can hear her but cannot get to her. After the dragon has disappeared, Elodie finds the blunt dagger and sharpens it on a rock before severing a portion of her clothing. Despite the excruciating pain in her leg, she perseveres and uses the ripped cloth to patch the wound. Then, in order to utilize the diffuser as a lantern, she opens it and lights a little fire inside of it. She can now go about the cave and soon discovers a very little opening. She starts to crawl through it, but her dress gets caught again. She pulls to get out of it and falls as a result. Elodie tries her utmost to hang on, but she falls again and extinguishes the diffuser's flames since her hands are sore and worn out. Determined to reach a light she can see in the distance, Elodie gets up and walks while holding onto the wall. She refuses to give up. She walks out of the tunnel after enduring excruciating pain, only to nearly tumble down a precipice. After removing her wedding ring and tossing it into the abyss, Elodie goes to make a large leap because she can still see the light at the other side. Fortunately, as she falls, her belt gets lodged in a rock because the other side of the cliff is too slick for her to grasp onto. She has enough time to remove the knife and wedge it into a fissure to cling on, even though it breaks soon. The light originates from adorable luminous slugs she finds out after using the dagger to ascend the last distance. Elodie pulls off her puffy sleeve and stuffs a bunch of slugs inside to create a new lantern after making sure they don't bite. After a little while, she discovers a small lake, but as soon as she tries to drink, she spits the water out. It turns out that the flavor is repulsive due to the cave plants. Elodie, however, stands beneath the dripping ice on the roof to collect any droplets she can. Elodie opens her eyes to see the dragon using her fire to break through the ice as the ice begins to melt more quickly and appears somewhat crimson. Elodie flees as the dragon bursts through the ice and lands in the tavern to pursue her, but the dragon can't follow her very far because she finds another tunnel that is too little for enormous creatures to pass through. Elodie discovers a note signed by the letter V that reads, Safe here, she cannot reach, on the wall of this little tavern. Elodie searches about and discovers several girls' clothes, as well as their names placed over the years on another wall, including the V that belonged to a girl named Victoria. Elodie cries for a bit before taking off the bandage from her leg, which doesn't seem to be getting any better. Elodie then tries to nod off while embracing the lantern. She suddenly begins to glimpse the spirits of the earlier sacrifices, who are hurting, afraid, and feeling betrayed. Victoria turns around as she is writing her name on the wall to inform Elodie that everything is false. Elodie wakes up at that precise moment to discover snails all over her leg wound. She panics and begins taking them off, only to find that their slime has healing qualities and her leg is healthy now. She apologizes for underestimating the size of her other big wound and applies a slub to it. Now that she's feeling better, Elodie looks around more carefully and notices a map on the wall indicating that at least one female was able to escape. According to the map, she will encounter three forks in the tunnel. She needs to go through the center one and follow the music and crystals to exit. Elodie then, disregarding the reverberations of the dragon's snarls, tears off all the awkward sections of her clothing, writes her name on the wall, and grabs the middle fork. She eventually hears a faint melody and proceeds a short distance to discover a wall covered in crystals. These crystals are the source of the sounds, and because they are directly beneath the exit, they also illuminate in the sunlight. There's a crown nearby with a V on it, indicating that Victoria was the one who managed to escape. Because the stones are sharp, Elodie rips off more of her clothing to cover her hands and feet before beginning to ascend with the crown's assistance. Elodie tries to climb up, unaware that the dragon is observing, but at the last second, a crystal fractures under her grasp, sending her plummeting. Fortunately, she uses the crown to grab on. When Elodie hears the dragon approaching, she rushes to the exit and finds herself standing on the precipice of a hole that is incredibly high in the mountainside. Elodie is so devastated that she breaks down in tears. Elodie hears horses neighing suddenly, and she recognizes that several riders are getting closer to the peak. As she tries to scream for assistance, the dragon flies in her direction and closes the opening. Elodie retreats just in time to see another note, signed by V, on the wall that reads, Not safe. 
Victoria perished there and never made it out, based on the body found nearby. As the dragon prepares to fire, she is interrupted by the sound of a man calling Elodie's name. It is revealed that Lord Bayford has arrived with two knights and a guide to look for Elodie as the dragon soars off to investigate. Using a rope to descend into the cave, they begin examining the area. Elodie uses their voices to find her way back. Recalling Victoria's remarks, she follows a new tunnel and is stunned to find a nest with three dead baby dragons. This realization that Isabel had been lying leads her to believe that the dragon wasn't the last of its type and that she wasn't the first to strike. According to a flashback, the dragon's strike was a retaliatory move since the king had entered the tavern specifically with the intention of killing all the babies. When the king's turn came, the dragon informed him that death would be too simple and that he should suffer in the same way as she had. Previously, she had murdered every knight as depicted at the beginning. In order to pass for royal daughters, the royal family has since fed the dragon three women whose blood has been blended with theirs. Elodie later locates her father and his troops, but she keeps her identity a secret for the time being out of fear. A knight is taken by the dragon, who then launches him into the air and lets him fall from a high height. The knight dies on impact after bouncing off the rocks and falling to the earth. The dragon captures the second knight and crushes him under her paw while the guide rides away to hide, and then she questions Bayford. When he tries to attack with his sword, after explaining that he is here to save his daughter, the dragon catches him with her tail, disarms him, and then drops him. The dragon urges Bayford to call for his daughter as Elodie lurks around, waiting for the perfect moment. After making a sincere apology and acknowledging that he had made a terrible error, Bayford orders Elodie to stay outside, at which point the dragon pushes him to the ground and stabs him in the heart with her claw. Elodie can't help but cry, and the dragon begins to look for her. Fortunately, the guard also makes a sound, and the dragon follows him, mistaking him for Elodie. With the dragon gone, Elodie bids her dad farewell and gives him a final kiss on the forehead before he passes away. Then she begins to climb out of the tavern using the rope he left behind. Elodie climbs fast enough to escape the flames that now surround the entrance, but the dragon finds him and crushes him to death before pursuing her. Elodie hops on her father's horse right away and rides for a short while before hopping off to hide behind some rocks. The dragon follows the horse, believing it to be dead, only to be duped into continuing. Then, as a warning that the agreement has been broken, the dragon pours fire on the skies, creating a terrible storm. When Isabel at the castle realizes this, she sends her knights right away to capture Floria. While attempting to stop them, Lady Bayford is stabbed. After the fire has passed, Elodie emerges from hiding and runs into Lady Bayford, who has traveled a great distance on a horse while still bleeding. After learning of what has transpired, Elodie rides the horse back to the mountain and swears to save her sister. Henry declines to perform the ceremony with a child while Floria is being brought to the bridge in the interim. Ignoring him, Isabel cuts Floria's hand to mix the blood before plunging her into the chasm using her own blood. Elodie finds herself at the bridge after everyone has left and the dragon has captured an unconscious Floria. The dragon chooses not to kill Floria just now, as she wants to use her as a bait to get Elodie to come get her sister. A desperate Elodie takes the rope and heads back into the tavern, tracing her route much more quickly thanks to her prior knowledge. Elodie equips herself with her father's sword and sets up a trap for the dragon after consulting the map twice to locate the monster's lair. The armor and rope that make up this trap are burning beneath a tiny flame. As Alati leaves, the armor collapses and the rope burns out, sending the dragon flying from her lair to investigate the disturbance. This gives Elodie the opportunity to enter the lair covertly and awaken Floria, who moves slowly due to a leg injury. Elodie is waiting with her sword drawn and Floria hides as the dragon returns to its lair after realizing the trap. The dragon tries to breathe fire, not believing her when she tries to explain that they've all been duped by the queen. Elodie reroutes the attack by stabbing her mouth with the sword, but she still tumbles down the edge of the lair and sustains some burns on her shoulder and arms. Elodie lands in a lake and swims out in time to avoid being struck by another sword that Floria is about to brandish while the dragon takes away the sword. The dragon suddenly leaps on her, grabs hold of her, and stabs her with her claw. Elodie pulls out a dagger and stabs the dragon in the eye, stopping her before she can kill her and making her fling Elodie away. Subsequently, Elodie seizes the blade once more and charges towards the dragon, whose vision is impaired in one eye. Though it doesn't do much harm, she succeeds in stabbing the beast in the chest before the dragon takes her once more. The dragon drops her again when Elodie stabs her paw. Elodie gets an idea when she sees the dust bouncing off a curving stalagmite as the dragon approaches. The dragon breaths Elodie's fire as she stands in front of the stalagmite, telling it to burn her down. Elodie, however, dodges at the last second, forcing the fire to ricochet off the stalagmite and settle on the dragon, ultimately bringing her down. Elodie then proves to the dragon that the creature has been murdering common girls rather than royalty by displaying the scar on her hand. Elodie drops the sword and refuses to break this hateful cycle when the dragon begs her to stop. She then takes hold of several slugs and applies them to the dragon's body to allow her to heal completely. In the meantime, a second wedding is being held in the castle in an attempt to dupe the third female of this generation. When a coin suddenly starts to tumble down the altar, 
Elodie enters and tells the bride to grab her family and flee. The villagers are then told by Elodie that they too might flee if they so choose, but only the servants heed her and depart. In order to put an end to it, the dragon then appears and breathes fire on everyone in the room, killing Isabel and every member of the royal dynasty. Henry shuts his eyes, knowing he deserves the punishment even as everyone else freaks out. Elodie walks out with her head held high as the fortress soon falls. After a few days, Elodie, Floria, and a recuperating Lady Bayford prepare to depart aboard a ship that is loaded with provisions and gold for their people. Together, they decide to manage their estate, and Elodie even begins referring to Bayford as mother rather than stepmother. The dragon flies by and gives Elodie a respectful nod as they make their way home.